Hey y'all, here we are on a Tuesday evening, barreling through May and the sun is setting. I'm up here in uh, what was a junk pile, but uh, me and my cousin's been getting after it and made some progress for sure, thanks to uh, my good buddy Steve with A1 Mobile Dump or A Mobile Dump over in Lufkin, shameless plug there. Yes, I paid him for the dumpster. Uh, we're good friends and trade out other things, but this is his business, so we uh, employed him to drop this thing off and got uh, tons of junk in it, and that's exactly what it is, right? Stuff can pile up on, on this old place. Some of it I couldn't part with, right? <laughs> Y'all seen this before. I got to get all this stuff up and, and cleaned up and use it for some different things. Uh, see who remembers what these are. I looked up the other day. I can still get the webbing, but I got to cut down the tree <laughs> to get it out. Well, here's one. See who, who we're gonna date you now. If you know what uh, what this is, some of y'all will. Come on out of there, the old chair. Y'all remember sitting in these in the summertime? Little aluminum frames. With all the different uh that webbing on it well uh, i got about four of them up here we're gonna re-web them and and put them back in commission yeah well, i was up here looking after the we've got some rain around here y'all for real since january this old place uh i've got a a uh agricultural app that tracks it <clears throat> and um I believe i looked this morning comes through well, I was going to say light rain, but I guess that'd be a pun. But it's steady. Every morning comes through to my inbox. And this morning through yesterday was 41.38 inches of rain on this piece of land up against a normal of 18.9. So I'm sure thankful I didn't till all of it up to just dirt like we used to do. That's a lot of weeds there, but they're holding the dirt back on the other side for those potatoes. So we're in good shape. I hope y'all are having a good week. <clears throat> y'all sound off where you're at. And we'll go back through the comments in a little bit. But uh, this thing about looking at some of these old memories on this place. You know, sometimes I wish that uh, we knew we were in the good old days before the good old days pass, right? Well, I guess that takes a little bit of a choice on all of our parts to know that every day is a good old day. But I think sometimes we barrel through life and different friendships and all and don't realize when they're thick of it that we're gonna look back on it with cherished memories and end up not enjoying them as much as maybe we should have. But I guess we can all do better about that. All the goats are doing good. I, I, uh, the herd is growing. Every time I go in there to feed, I'm like, man, where did all these goats come from? They're just coming on. Tank's still with us on the place. He's uh, he's taking him a sabbatical. His owner is having some work done there on their place, which leaves uh, a tendency for open gates on that high fence ranch. And you know, male Pyrenees will roam. So we've decided it's probably best for him to hang out down here for a couple of weeks. He's enjoying life in there with those chickens. Of course, they don't know what to think about that big old dog. He ain't gonna hurt them, but it makes them hurt their <laughs> I guess it is what it is I uh, kind of been bothered we'll talk about that here in a minute and I'm bothered that I'm bothered I talked to a couple of good friends and one kind of helped me nail it down to maybe what I'm bothered about and I shouldn't be and uh, y'all ever just get plum mad at yourself about stinking thinking or thinking about something well, yeah, I do it all the time I know I'm wrong and thinking about it but uh just gets in your crawl and bugs you i guess but it's along the lines of there's a lady stopped at a roadside egg vendor out in the country man didn't have much just a little simple place and uh, had a sign up eggs for sale well, she pulled up in her nice car and I'm gonna buy her some eggs from this gentleman so she asked him she said sir you get some of these eggs how much you get for them he said well if it's since peace, she said, well, I'll take six for 250 That's all I'm going to pay you. Yeah. 
Old man decided he'd take what he could get to the normal $3. He sent her on her way with her eggs for $2.50. She got into him for a little bit. That was all right. Well, she's on her way to town and stopped and picked up her good friend. They went out to a really nice, fine restaurant. And, uh, the owner came over to wait on them. Seemed to be a little affluent. <clears throat> so they dined fine that afternoon. I think the bill was probably $75, $80 for the two of them. So they ate pretty good. And there at the end, they tipped the owner of that business a $100 bill on top of their fare. And uh, I think that's kind of wrong, if you ask me. Got the man trying to make a living on the side of the road that might could have used that extra 50 cents. They go on down the road and they give a man that probably didn't really need that hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, right? I don't know why we do that sometimes as human beings. We kind of mistreat those that don't need to be mistreated and treat those that have plenty a little extra. That's weird, isn't it? I saw a story of a young man that always with his dad out buying different little trinkets from the homeless that might be selling something just to make a meal and if they was asking five dollars he'd give him 20 wouldn't want the change and he asked his dad he said dad why, why, why do you overpay for stuff from these folks it only cost five dollars and you gave him a 20 dollar bill he said well son the way i see it that's charity wrapped in dignity they're trying so I'm going to give them a little leg up. That kind of leads me to what's bothered me, and I debated talking about it, but uh, I think it might do good to self-reflect. It sure has made me self-reflect. All of y'all watching and subscribing and following the channel and seen for years now, we talk about being in the light, and I do my best to do that, help people out that need to be helped, and do a lot of it behind the scenes as we should sometimes we share it just to inspire you to do it but, uh, in my business it's a uh, a service for a luxury item that uh, people have and enjoy in their homes and uh, i get lots of calls from desperate folks that, that are kind of in a bind and need just a little help getting getting it up and running for the season most of them have ability to pay and try to help where I can with advice and educate. Just uh, make enough to keep the bluebell in the freezer in there. But I have one particular customer, I won't say any names, and I'm going somewhere with this. And it's not any shame on this person. That's, it's, it's, it's just, uh, they, they had really, uh, really bugged me, I guess. And I'm very busy and got enough regular customers that I really can't take on any new ones. But they insisted, they're a widow, um, living in a very affluent neighborhood here in Nagadoches. Nice home, probably a million dollar home, got a family. But uh, had, had a pool, that need a little TLC ahead of Mother's Day. And I had uh, encouraged them a month ago that it's probably too busy with the rain that they could find somebody else, but they were out of options. So I took it on, went over there and <clears throat> handled business and we talked on the phone, agreed on the price. And, they wanted me to come back one more time before Mother's Day to really make it look perfect for the weekend. So I did. <clears throat> Happy to do it. Got it all shined up and ready for guests for a celebratory weekend. And that's the last I heard of them. No payment. No response to a one phone call and a voicemail and a text. Some would say they got over on me. I'd argue that, though. I was like, uh, it's funny how the good Lord will teach you stuff. Now, if they'd have called me and said they didn't have any money but really need to get it up and running, I'd have been over there and probably even gave them a, a 20 or a 50 or whatever to get lunch on top of cleaning it for them. But uh, that wasn't the case. What really bothers me is they're laying there tonight feeling guilty, knowing that uh, they didn't necessarily do right, probably. They intended to, but who knows what their uh, situation is. That little bit of money make no difference to me. But I didn't get to choose to bless them, right? So that's what I'm mad at myself about, about even thinking about it. 
giving it a second thought. It hit me pretty hard. But, uh, our uh, good Lord's the same way. We commit so many transgressions over our life and, and uh, cause him pain, but he uh, let himself be put up on that old tree, didn't he? And sacrificed it all for us. And uh, didn't complain about it. So my goodness, who am I to complain about that? Right? So I'll probably be sending a, a text or even a little card, maybe a thank you card to the address and let her know she's absolved of that. That's what we should do. Uh, I can tell you, uh, shortly after that happened, that afternoon I was blessed with another job that I didn't expect. It, uh, it all come through and, and uh, much bigger profit margin. And, it helps the folks out. Funny how the Lord will bless you like that. I guess the takeaway is just it was bugging me that it was bugging me. I should have just wrote it off and kept rolling knowing I blessed somebody. And, but it wasn't my choice. So I guess the, the Lord's saying that uh, just simmer down and keep walking, right? <laughs> so you have to do that sometimes. There was an icon of the 19th century. A lot of us are rolling around. <clears throat> on uh, one of his brainchilds. His name was Henry Ford. He was going to hire a new uh, engineer for one of his plants, and he had two very qualified applicants that he decided he'd take out to lunch as sort of a pre-interview. Uh, they went out to eat a pretty nice little restaurant. They talked about current events and things that were going on in the world and enjoyed a good meal. There toward the end, when the waiter brought the check... <clears throat> He was getting up to leave, and Mr. Ford looked at one of them and said, You know what? I think I've made my decision. You're going to be a good fit for my company, so you're hired. Well, the other old boy just sat there just dumbfounded as they hadn't went through an interview process, hadn't talked about engineering or qualifications. They were near a genius. He finally worked up the courage to ask Mr. Ford. He said, Sir, we didn't talk about anything that was relevant to the position. It, you made a decision on who you're hiring. How, how, how did that come to be? Mr. Ford looked at him and said, well, it's pretty easy, to be honest with you. First of all, there was two things that made my mind up. When the waiter brought our steaks out, the other gentleman tested his first by eating a bite of it to see how it was seasoned. You didn't hesitate to even taste your steak. You just immediately put salt on it assuming it wasn't seasoned correctly. He said, secondly, every time the waiter came to the table, the other gentleman acknowledged him and was kind and thanked him for the service that he was giving us. And you ignored him and just made sure your kindness was directed only to me. He said, neither one of those traits I want in my company. He said, first of all, you have to test something before you know if you need to change it. And I saw you didn't have that ability to do it, even with something as simple as a steak. And there is no hierarchy with me. I take people at face value and appreciate each one of them for the job that they do. And honestly, sir, you failed at both of those. So that's why I went with the other African. That was a pretty good lesson, I thought, as I read that. And so true. We don't know what's going on in other folks' lives, so we have to be more forgiving, don't we? I know... Uh, I'm sure I've transgressed against those and may not even know it. I sure wouldn't want them boiling mad at me, so who am I to be boiling mad at somebody else, right? I think we can learn that, but maybe maybe y'all went through a couple of those things before and, and uh, oh, it hurts. But uh, My buddy, he, uh, he, he summed it up right. He said it was the principle of it. Principle, that's a good word. Good way to do it. But, uh, Old place is wet, <laughs> but it's it's fertile. Got a, my buddy coming up tomorrow while I'm out doing pools and, and get this old yard mowed. It sure needs it. I have not seen mosquitoes this bad in a while. I was out there earlier. Uh, I was blessed to connect with a gentleman up in Garrison. Well, two or three of my, my buddy John at, at uh, Bulldog Tire finally got old squeaky. I need new shocks on that truck. It rides like a new car now, y'all. Uh, he's a good man. If y'all need any auto work done in this area, that's where you need to go up in Garrison. But 
I uh, I told him I, I saw he had a cat, and I don't I don't want nothing for nothing. And uh, I said, man, where's your caps at? So I look at them. I picked this one out, and one more I said, how much are they? He said, they're not for sale. I said, no, John, I'm gonna pay you for them. He said, no, you're not either. He said, they're promotional. I said, well, man, if I wear this on a video, then I got to tell Facebook that it's a paid promotion. He said, no, you don't. I said, well, yeah, I do, unless I pay you. So there's some Facebook watching. This cost me a penny, and the other one cost me a penny. So I paid. He so he's something else. He wouldn't let me pay for him to save my life just because he's a good man like that. But uh, I've been needing a chainsaw in a bad way and just not wanting to part with the, the money to buy a brand new one. But uh, there's a gentleman up Garrison Way and visited with him this afternoon. He's a pastor there at a local church. I didn't know that until I got there. But he uh, repairs a lot of chainsaws and has uh, that and weed eaters and things up there that uh, he restores and, and sells for use. So we uh, visited this afternoon, made a Struck up a good deal on one, and man, I was going to town out there a while ago, y'all. I didn't know what I was missing until you got to have one on the farm, and I don't know how I went, what, went without one for this long, but uh, we'll get some sure enough stuff done now. Uh, Randy's been over here with that skid steer, making things happen. I, uh, I keep meaning to start the video with this. I'm running a little long. We'll get off the gas here pretty quick. Y'all sound off where you're at, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But uh, show you a couple of things, because I don't know how long one of them's going to be here. Um, had an old storm cellar on this place when I grew up. We never used it for shelter. It's always been a little, uh, yeah. Water table ain't too good in Texas for storm cellars, and it always kind of dingy and ugly down in it. But uh, it's been here as long as I can remember. I don't know when it was built or who built it. Just old concrete structure. I believe my mom as a child probably refused from a few tornadoes in there. But when I was a kid, we would uh, go fishing. And uh, I can't tell you how much crappie and catfish blood <laughs> has been spilled on the top of this thing as we uh, cleaned fish and filleted them out. But uh, it's seen better days. We had some tenants here. Uh, before I moved back in, they decided they didn't need a trash service anymore because they had somewhere to dump it. So y'all can see it's all household trash. There ain't no way to get it out of there to speak of, so we're just going to have to implode it. Um, it goes about three foot down in the ground there. It's just a cesspool of mosquitoes and frogs and probably a few snakes. But it's seen better days with the cracks in the concrete and all. So... Best thing to do is just going to be to implode it and make it a, a pretty spot here again. What we're not doing is tearing this baby down. Any of y'all ever had to use one of these? I hadn't had to use one. I don't believe I ever used this one even. But an uh, old two-holer outhouse built in the 50s. I was told by a, a group of German immigrants that were part of a civilian corps commissioned by the government to go out through the rural areas and put in outside plumbing <laughs> so we're not tearing that down what breaks my heart is i'm gonna have to cut this oak down simply because uh, it's either lose the oak or the outhouse because you can see the roots are are getting in underneath it and lifting it up but uh well i hate to cut down an oak tree but for the preservation of that outhouse i guess i'm gonna have to and we'll I hope another one springs up we got one over there that'll shade it over but Sometimes you got to do a little culling to make things right again, don't you? That's a whole nother lesson, ain't it? I guess so. Let me slip up on this old well. The mosquitoes are too bad over there, y'all. I ain't going to get steel. <laughs> and I've covered with off, and it ain't cutting it out here right now. I was burning and flipped over a log, and I had, it looked like a fog of flies come out of there. Of course, we need a little sunshine and dry this stuff up to kill them things. They're everywhere. All right. Let's see who's on here real quick. I'm going to see if I can do it without my spectacles. Appreciate all the followers and people sounding off and sharing and messaging positive thoughts. It really helps out. Uh, keeps me going. Kind of been quiet the last few days, just waiting on a word. And, uh, 
Oh man, Stephen said it's supposed to get five and three eighths inches tomorrow. Boy, don't speak that into existence, sir. <laughs> I don't think you can get that big old truck. Well, you probably could. But you're gonna be slip sliding right now out here, sir. <laughs> oh man. Let's see, there's Barbara checking in from Midlothian. Let's see who else is on here. Well, I'm looking. Nobody's commenting. That's all right. Just got a lot of watchers. That's all right, too. Sometimes you just don't have nothing to say. I, believe it or not, I'm that same way. So, yep. All right. I think that's everybody. Uh, all right. Well, if I missed y'all, I'm sorry. I'll catch up to you after the live. Uh, let's see. There's Miss Maria uh, waving quick. She must be at work. Oklahoma's checking in with Deb Hood. There's Miss Jill. Yeah, I'm, I've missed you. Well, missed you as well. I, uh, just kind of quiet over the weekend with Mother's Day. Of course, um, it rained Sunday. Didn't didn't go see Mother's Grave, but y'all know my opinion on that. Of course, it's good to go honor it, but I'd rather spend my day on the place she lived on. She was never alive at that old graveside, right? It's where she lived, so that's how we choose to celebrate. But, uh, my sister did buy some real nice uh, granite vases that we're going to go up there and put on the rain kind of messed up our plans on that so but uh, anyway i was over at her house sunday with my my bucket rubber boots on <laughs> well she said i could use rubber boots or that water was coming down over there well yeah. when you're from the country and farming you just make do with what you got so that's what we did them buckets work just fine <laughs> even if i was a clown <laughs> there's miss mar or mr maurice james from uh, Salisbury, Maryland, checking in. I know y'all can't see the mosquitoes, but boy, they're swarming now. Uh, Peggy's from White Rock, Texas. White, well, I'm sorry, White Right. Excuse me. Mr. Terry, what's up to you, sir? Good to see you checking in. And Wendy's coming in from West Virginia. Um, oh, I'll wrap it up. I know my, my buddy Tony Ramey's gonna be in Crockett this Friday night, for those around that uh, like singer-songwriter. He uh, and I can't name all the awards and records and platinums and golds he got with uh, every household name from Alabama to Kerry Underwood, all of them. But uh, he's a close friend like a brother. And he's going to be in Jet Set. He's been here before. We picked a few tunes, or he has, and I just listened. I think, I think y'all would thank me for that. Just listen. Because I can't carry a tune in the bucket. Carry my foot in the bucket if the water's deep enough. But uh, he's he's a cherished friend and a brother. But he's going to be coming close to Crockett. I don't know if I'm going to be able to slip over there or not. I may try to. Uh, there's the Camp Street Cafe. Um, nice little historic venue. It's more of a listening room than anything. But uh, he's always got good stories and, and a good man. But he's probably going to invite y'all personally. He said uh, he might be posting a little video on here for y'all to, to take a look see at. So we'll see about that. Yeah. But, uh, my potatoes are coming up. Well, we've got plenty out there. But trying this tire garden thing. Uh, I just put this on this evening, but I'm not going to fill it up with dirt just yet. But uh, we're high enough now. Well, probably by Sunday, I'll go ahead and fill it up with dirt, and then we'll do it one more time. I don't have high hopes for it, but I thought I'd do it just to see what happens. Everybody's always talking about it. All right, well, y'all have a good evening. i got to uh, go rustle me up some vittles. And get these critters fed. Is that right, Hank? Hank's not real sociable, but he's all right. Now, Waylon's another another story. Yeah. yeah. You don't meet a stranger, do you? No, you don't. It's getting big, y'all. Yeah. Hank's holding down the fort. Hey, baby. He's letting me pet him now, but that's about as close as I can get to him. I don't know. I kind of wish Waylon was a little like that instead of always jumping up on me. Is that right, Hank? You gonna say howdy? Yeah. And Jordan's little buddy misses him. Jordan's doing fine out in Alabama. But uh, he's still looking for Jordan. He's he's not doing too good in these cat fights based on the look of his face. But that's what cats do, he's being a Tom. All right, y'all have a good evening. Be the light, and uh, we'll check in soon. And remember, be kind. I know I'm talking to me. Just let it go. Let it go and forgive. That's what we got to do right if we're going to be christ-like anyway and that's the goal
Y'all have a good night. Be the light.